Okay. Uh, so I'll count you down. I'll do the intro. I'll ask you a question and then you go for it. They want to hear from you, not me. But if, if, if we want to bounce back and forth, you want me to ask you further questions, you know. Oh, yeah, absolutely do that. Yeah, yeah. let's have a dialogue. Yeah, and then just finish a, you know, finish a thought and then I'll jump in. Okay. Okay. In five, four, three, two, one. Hi, everybody. It's Mike Kerr, and this is the future of America. On today's show, we have like an incredible guest. Just, I am blown away. He has spoken at several of the Hear the Watchman conferences. It's Colonel David Giamona. And the Colonel is a retired chaplain and just an amazing guy. I am dying to hear his view on what the future of America is. Colonel, thank you for joining us this morning. Mike, it's always my pleasure to be with you. Uh, we've been doing this for a few years now, and uh, it's just God's opening these tremendous doors, and we're getting the word out, the message out. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Colonel, we look around in America today. We see attacks on the conservatives. We see a political system that is completely broken down. We see a country that will probably never trust the electoral process again. Where do you see us going? Well, I don't think we have enough time for, for all of my views in this show, but I will uh, actually start this out. I have a lot to say about this. I, I fought for this country for 32 years as an army officer, chaplain. I've been in a number of combat zones, been around the world. I lived in Europe for five years. I've been to some of the worst places imaginable. Uh, when I landed in Kabul in Afghanistan, I called my wife on a sat phone and said, I think I just landed in the gates of hell. Uh, so I've seen some of the worst of humanity around the world, and I've seen some of the best of humanity as well. Uh, you know, America has always been, to me, a great country, um, and it's bounced back from a number of brinks, the Civil War. Uh, we didn't know if we were going to make it then, then through World War II, the Korean World War, Vietnam, numbers of things like that going through all the way up to right now. So where are we? Uh, people ask me this all the time. Where is America? Where are we going? And I really want to answer this in, as uh, succinctly as I can in this show. Because I, I think a, a parallel process is going on right now. America for years has been storing up judgment from God. Uh, you name it, um, aborted babies by the millions, corrupt political uh, world that we live in right now. The corruption in, in not just politics, but in our legal system and everything. Else. We've gotten away from the Ten Commandments, from the Judeo-Christian heritage from all the things that brought this country to its greatness is now we're being brought to our needs. And so um, the Lord showed me, in fact, just before the last conference I spoke at in San Diego, the night before the Lord showed me the judgment that was coming in the supernatural to California uh, and to other uh, states in the, in the union. So uh, judgment is coming to America. So there's a parallel process. I think judgment is coming. And at the same time, I believe revival is happening. So those people who are repenting and getting right with God, uh, you know, they're getting ready for the, the coming of the Lord and all the things that God has for them. And the rest of the country is really going to be, at this point, God has given us a very weak leadership. And that's a judgment already. He's given us a really poor infrastructure. We got open borders. We blew it in Afghanistan. On and on and on it goes. So judgment is coming and is already here. And now I think we're going to be hit with things that we've never seen in our lifetime or maybe even in our history. I think the future America, if for as far as God is concerned, and judgment, and if he doesn't judge America, then he's got to go apologize to Israel for judging Jerusalem, for Sodom, Gomorrah, for all those other things, because we are far worse than they are. So judgment is coming. We're going to have a shaking 
Uh, we're going to be a, see a shaking politically. We're going to see a shaking physically. Uh, we're going to see all kinds of things happening. Uh, this pandemic is part of that, and all and on and on it goes. So we're definitely um, in a very difficult place, but at the same time, I believe revival and the hope, the revival is coming and is here as well. Well, Colonel. Judgment is definitely here. It's upon us. There is no doubt about that with everything going on. Let's take a look at a couple of hot topics right now that were released in the last two days. First of all, as a military man, the State Department released new numbers saying that the Biden administration left an additional 200 Americans behind in Afghanistan. What's your what 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 does that mean to a man that's dedicated his life to fighting for our country? Well, you know, in the military, Mike, we have a saying you were in the military, too. But in the army, we don't leave anybody on the battlefield. And the reason why historically we've never done that, because if we do, then they're not going to be joining the army. They're not going to trust us. They're not going to fight for America because they're not going to believe in what we do. We don't leave our friends on the battlefield. And that's what Joe Biden and this administration has done. They left Americans for the first time in history. No one is hardly even talking about it, you know, just in the last few days. But yeah, we've had them. We know there are Americans there. And for us to leave them there, and leave them in the hands of the Taliban is unconscionable. And that's part of the judgment I'm talking about. When what God puts in weak leadership, it's part of the judgment uh, that's going on right now in America and around the world. So, um, you know, uh, military men, don't we don't leave people on the battle. We need to go back and get our Americans and get them out of there if we're any kind of uh, country at all. Well, I, you know, it's, it's sickening. Uh, it just is sickening what the Biden administration has done, uh, and it's a disgrace. Now, second hot topic. Uh, this morning, news was released that the parents of the young girl who was raped in a school bathroom, the girl's bathroom, by a guy who was wearing a dress. The young man found guilty of rape. There's some vindication. But Colonel, how in the world did we end up with that kind of thing happening where a boy in a dress can go in the girl's bathroom at a school and rape a young woman? You know, Mike, uh, if you would have written this some years ago in a science fiction novel, everybody would have said, that's outrageous. That would never happen. Again, it's part of the judgment. You know, we've lost our moral foundations, our fabric. It's coming unglued at every level. And people at the highest levels don't even realize what is coming. Just like Jeremiah, I've been reading through the book of Jeremiah here right lately as we read through the entire Bible every year. And Jeremiah was not a popular guy. And I got news for, uh, for, for both of us and others around us. We're not uh, preaching a very popular topic right now because we're talking about judgment coming. Jeremiah did the same thing. They threw him in a cistern in a well uh, until all his stuff came to pass. And then they took him out. The Babylonians took him out at the very end. But these kinds of things is about that we're going to continue to see them. It's not that I... I take great joy in talking about this but the fact of the matter is when you when you stop you know getting on the the ten commandments and the supreme court if you stop that you stop the moral fabric you start doing anything that comes to your mind you, you look at the university and the professors and what they're teaching and by the way i tell all these professors they're teaching about socialism and communism how great it is you're going to be the first ones to be killed when socialists take over this country because they can't afford elite supremacists to be thinking about those things. It happened under Russia. It happened under communists. Millions died under socialism and communism because you cannot be a thinker and be in those countries. Just look at North Korea right now. All of that to say this, you know, this thing about the bathroom and everything else that's going on with transgender is completely nuts unless you're in the dark and you don't know what you're doing. You don't have any moral fabric. And that looks okay to you. And that's what's going on right now in this country. 
Amen. And you know, Colonel, we are dancing right now on the brink of hyperinflation here in the U.S. What do you see will come of hyperinflation and how do you think it'll affect us all as consumers in America? Well, the guy that's on the top of this country right now has no idea what he's doing. You and I know that, everybody else, the Democrats know this. He has no idea, he doesn't even know what inflation is, let alone hyperinflation. He doesn't understand economy. He never, in fact, Barack Obama said the same thing. He said, Joe Biden doesn't have what it takes. This is from Barack Obama saying, Joe Biden doesn't have what it takes to be the president of the United States. So I see it continuing. He doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know how to stop it. The people that are around him are clueless. So we're heading for a economic meltdown. And, and again, I don't want to be a doom and gloomer, but that's exactly these policies they're putting in place exactly where we're headed. And it's, again, part of the judgment. So I'm telling people, look, you know, at this point, um, you know, in the back of our book, The Military Guide to Armageddon, there's a whole chapter on what you should do to get physically ready. Folks, you need to get physically ready because of the things that we have experienced in the last year on COVID is nothing compared to what is going to be happening in the future. You know, the Bible says a global economic meltdown is going to happen and chaos is going to happen and the Antichrist will rise out of that. Chaos. The same thing happening. History is repeating itself. It's why they're tearing down all the statues and all these other things are going on because they're trying to forget history. But if we don't learn from history, which we don't and we're not going to, the same thing's going to happen. Hitler rose in Germany and he said, hey, I've got the answers. And the German people, the German church followed him and said, yeah, this guy's got the answers. We're going to be great again. Same thing is happening right now. We're on the brink of it. Yeah, there's, there's absolutely no doubt. Now, you bring up the book, The Military Guide to Armageddon, which, folks, is available uh, through Amazon. I will be putting a link to that book uh, so you can avail yourself on our website at hearthewatchmenmen.com. But, Colonel, in your book, talk to us about what you lay out for people. Yeah, a lot of people ask me... Um... Uh, am I all doom and gloom? <laughs> and the answer is, I think I really uh, am not a doom and gloom more, more than I am a being prepared, not prepper in the, you know, the literal sense, but being prepared. And I'll give you a clue. Uh, we talk about Joseph in the book. And what we do is lay out the book is preparedness, being prepared, knowing who God is, especially is important, and understanding the fog of war the chaos of chaos of combat. And so we talk about the life of Joseph near the end. And Joseph was sent by God to Egypt through a series of really unfortunate things for him. He was thrown in prison, but then he was brought out. He interpreted a dream of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh make him second command of all of Egypt. And he instituted his policy of saving all the grain in the granaries and for the seven fat years, because in seven more years, the lean years were coming. Well, folks, the lean years, in some respects, are already here, but they're still in, a, in the future coming. And so what we lay out is not just physical preparedness, that's a part of it, but spiritual preparedness. And the question I ask people is all the time, are you battle ready? Are you ready, spiritually prepared for the things that we are going to and have encountered and going to encounter in the future? So that's basically the gist of the book. Well, you know, it's so important, folks, that you avail yourself of this information because, you know, the battle has begun. And as it heats up, it becomes too late. So you want to prepare in advance. Now, Colonel, you know, like you said, you're not doom and gloom. And certainly here, the watchman is not doom and gloom. We are all about the hope. Where is the hope in the future of America? Well, that's, you know, that really is the question of questions. One of the greatest questions you can ask, because, you know, I can ask you and I can ask myself and a number around me, is, is our hope in like Donald Trump and, and a great president? No, 
because man is always going to fail you. I mean, I'd love to have a great president, don't get me wrong, but my hope is not placed solely in a man or in a political system or even in the United States of America, which I love this country. I, like I said, I fought for it for 32 years in, on active duty in the military. But the fact of the matter is our hope has to be in Jesus Christ. I've been reading a great book from years ago by J.I. J. I. Packer calling Knowing God. And in there, he asked a great question, and which we ask again now is this, who is God? You know, and if you know him, then what do you know about God? And how is he going to help you? And who, you know, in the, in the history of mankind, who is he? And what the answer really comes down to one thing. He is incarnate in Jesus Christ, our Savior, who died on the cross to give us eternal hope. If my hope is just in this life and all the things that there is, then I have very little to look forward to. But if my hope is in Jesus Christ, who is the eternal King of Kings and Lord of Lords and soon coming back, then my hope is in Jesus Christ, who I'm going to spend eternity with. And that's where I want to place all my hope. That's why we wrote the book. And that's why I'm speaking to you today. Without Jesus Christ, there is no hope. Amen. Amen, Colonel. Now, listen, how do people find you? How do they, how do they connect with you? Well, uh, of course, our book is available in everywhere books are sold, Amazon, in all the great stores. And so that's not a, that's not a big uh, thing to do. You can find it anywhere. Just type it in, the Military Guide to Armageddon. Now, we have several websites that uh, we have developed over the last few years that are going very, very well. And so uh, you can go to my website, which is davidjgiamona.com. That's easy to find. And Giamona is G-I-A-M-M-O-N-A. And you can go to our battle-ready.org website, battle-ready.org. Man, it has a ton of stuff that we're doing and have done. Radio, TV interviews, all of that is in there. Um, and my co-author, you can find his website, Troy Anderson, uh, who has a great website uh, and author's page as well. So there's a lot of ways of finding us. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Just type in Giamona. There's a, there aren't that many Giamonas in the world, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, folks, if you want to hear one of the most outstanding presentations that I have ever witnessed, it was the colonel at our San Diego Warriors Conference. If you just visit our website, hear the watchmen, M-E-N dot com, you can avail yourself of the on-demand version of that. It's right on our homepage. Also, I'm asking you, subscribe to this channel. Click the bell in the upper uh, menu bar so you get notifications of new videos. If you go to our website, I post news articles that are important and links to everyone on there that you want to follow or listen to. So avail yourself of this resource. Colonel, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy morning to join us here on the Future of America. Mike, it's my pleasure. You guys are doing great things that hear the Watchmen. I really urge people to go to your website, subscribe to everything that you're doing, you're going to get some great help, folks. So, Mike, thanks for having me. And we look forward to a for, uh, future ministry together as, uh, as the Lord permits. Well, listen, folks, that's going to wrap it up for this edition of The Future in America. And as I always say, remember, pray and never, ever give up and always help your brothers and sisters. We'll see you next time on another edition of The Future in America. Okay. That was awesome, brother. That yeah. was absolutely we had a awesome. Good, con good conversation. Uh, I didn't really touch very many of the other subjects, but that's maybe for a future because we could talk uh, about what Russia has in weaponry, China, what we're getting ready to see an invasion of Taiwan, uh, Iran and Iraq and uh, Israel, all the geopolitical stuff. It goes on and on forever. I'd love to. I mean, we'll, I'll look at my calendar and we'll schedule another one and have you talk about that stuff because I think people need to hear it. Yeah, and God's opening some tremendous doors. Monday, I'll be talking to faith and freedom of people uh, all over the country. These are leaders 
in their various aspects. And I also have a, a, a phone call in for Frank. He's, he texted me, Frank Wright from the National Religious Broadcasters. Uh, he wants to talk to me. He's excited about Battle Ready and all the things going on there. So well, God's opening some tremendous doors around the country for us. Well, the war wages on, right? Yeah, absolutely does. And it's not going to stop for any man. No. <laughs> yeah. All right, brother. You have a wonderful, wonderful day. Be blessed. I'll talk. Bless. I'll talk to you again soon. All right, brother. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.